I'm going to read this famous warning prophecy uh, straight out of the book, our book. The book of our own letters, volume six, and it's on if you want to turn to it, or if you uh, want to find it later, you find it on page 5063. Our page numbers are numbered according to the actual number, of, total number of pages in all of these volumes. And this is volume six, page 5063 of the so called Mo Letters. I rather call them today the Letters of Love. God's Letters of Love to us through me to you to help reveal the future to you and instruct you for the present as well as the future and help explain to you the past as well as the future praise the Lord now in this very short little prophecy uh, the Lord seems to be a lot less long winded than I am he can say a lot more in a few words than I seem to be able to do I'm a mere man, and except in the direct prophecies which I receive from the Lord, uh, most of my letters are teaching letters. I believe they're inspired. I believe uh, they're God-led, and uh, of the wisdom that God has given me, a gift of wisdom, understanding, and so on. But I seem to have a talent for rambling on and on and on and explaining everything to you, like I am right now, from start to finish. I've given you the whole summary of world history again and the future again, in case some of you hadn't heard about it before. And to help remind you of it, and the more times I go over it, the better you'll remember it. Pretty soon, if I keep going over it again and again, you'll have it memorized. I hope you have. So you'll know when it happens. And you'll know what to expect and be prepared for. Well, this is one of the most specific prophecies we ever received, and it was through my mother. The question is, when is the war going to begin and where? Well, this gives a pretty good idea of when and almost specifically where. And it starts with these words. Turn your eyes toward Memphis. Now, Memphis was the greatest capital of Egypt which ever existed. Memphis was the most glorious city of all Egypt. It was the capital of Egypt when the pyramids were built. And it was considered the uh, leading city of the world when Egypt was the world's first uh, man-made empire. It was black, by the way, because the Egyptians or the Hamites, they were Hamites and they were black. Uh, the very word, ancient Egyptian word, Ham, means black. The son of Noah, uh, one of his sons named Ham or Ham, was apparently black. I don't know whether he turned black after his father cursed him before his sin against his own father, seemingly one of the most heinous sins and abominable sins that God uh, considers one of the worst of all man's sins, a sexual sin called sodomy man with man doing that which is very evil and disgusting and for which God destroyed the many cities and civilizations and which is one of the most rampant sins of this modern generation and age by the way which has swept the world uh, not only swept all of Africa but from Africa throughout Europe and Asia and, and the whole western hemisphere sad to say until when I last was in the United States uh, the walls of the restrooms and their graffiti were not just merely covered with uh, pornographic uh, pictures of men with women or naked women, but of men, disgusting pictures of men working uh, evil with men in sexual uh, sin, which is such an abomination to God. He wiped out whole cities and whole countries and whole civilizations, whole empires for it. And it's no doubt one of the sins for which he's going to wipe out the whole world, um, and uh, at least a part of the world soon, where it's rampant. Memphis, Egypt, was the capital of Egypt, the great first world empire of Egypt. It was the greatest nation in the world. We call it an empire because it was the greatest nation in the world, and therefore it ruled the world. 
Memphis was its capital, and it was Egypt in the glory of the days of Memphis when the pyramids and so on were built. <clears throat> Even before the days of the uh, of Moses, the pyramids dating back to uh, probably uh, four or five thousand BC. Uh, no, no longer than that, because uh, creation only dates back a little more than six thousand BC. I mean, four thousand BC. Uh, I'm sorry. 4,000 B.C., and therefore the pyramids date back uh, no more than 4,000 B.C. Well, they came uh, apparently not too long afterward, at least, and uh, possibly uh, after the flood uh, on the Tower of Babel, still an effort of man to reach the heavens with his great building. And uh, that was uh, about uh, 2,500 years. Uh, before Christ, 2500, 2600 B.C. So perhaps they're not even more than 2,000 years uh, uh, before Christ. In other words, uh, 4,000 years ago. Possibly they were built. Only about four or 5,000 years ago. So, in the days when that country was the dominant power on earth and its capital was the capital of the world, so to speak, uh, it was the ruler of the earth. Apparently, it is very dear to the devil because it was his world capital at that time, full of his demonic uh, religion and his demon-possessed idols and demon-possessed people and witchcraft and magicians and all the rest. It was uh, virtually an ideal government of the devil. It was virtually a, uh, a sample of the coming Antichrist world government of the world, the final government of man. So that apparently the devil, in a sense, is going to try to revive the grandeur and glory of Egypt and his first great glorious government in the government of the Antichrist because the leader of this government is going to come out of Egypt, according to both God's word and this recent prophecy and many other revelations. The coming world dictator of the coming world government after the world war, uh, nuclear war, is going to come from Egypt, believe it or not. It will have as its center and possibly its capital for a while in Egypt, but will move into Israel and occupy Jerusalem, which is the center of the world's three greatest religions, and make that his capital, uh, whereby he hopes to control the three, the world's three leading religions, which control the world, and thereby control it himself until finally he abolishes all religion and declares just one religion, and that is the worship of himself and an idol of himself as God. So this great world government will arise in some way out of Egypt because its leader, its world leader, will come from Egypt. Now Egypt uh, at one time covered uh, most of North Africa and the uh, Mideast and was not merely confined to its present borders. So this world leader and world government of uh, that world government could come out of perhaps any uh, portion of that. However, God's word in his latest revelation, this one to my mother and uh, subsequent revelations have confirmed it. He says, turn your eyes toward Memphis. We're going to the details of this period now, do you understand? We covered the overall picture in the Art of Eden series now, in the World series. We're covering the details. Turn your eyes toward Memphis, for out of it shall come the great confusion. Now, what could be the great confusion? Well, for one thing, uh, Babylon is another word for confusion. The word Babylon means confusion. And the first great Babylon, uh, called Babylon in the Bible, built near the Tower of Babel, where the babbling first began, 
as their languages were confused, and they began to babble one to another and couldn't understand each other because God cursed them <clears throat> with all these languages that we still are cursed with and have to fight with and try to understand each other in order to divide the nations of the earth and divide the power of the world. Otherwise, the original Babylon, or Tower of Babel and its people, would have become a great world empire themselves of just one uh, uh, politics and one language, and probably with one world leader, and it would have gone to the devil, the world, the whole world would have gone to the devil even sooner under such a world dictatorship. But God broke up the nations and the languages in order to bring about confusion so that man, no one nation and no one man could get that powerful before his time. But obviously, the Lord is going to allow this great Babylon to be recreated again. This great world confusion, which will be to us, pardon me, as we know, uh, from the author of confusion. And who is the author of confusion? Well, God's Word tells us that it's Satan, the devil. He is the author of confusion. He, the enemy of our souls, is the author of confusion. So, so this author of confusion, uh, which this prophecy speaks, can be none other than the devil himself. Of course, he will come in the form of a man, this world dictator, so uh, they are one and the same. Both the devil and the Antichrist are the author of confusion. And out of Memphis, Egypt will come this great confusion. Now that means the leader of it, and the government of it, and the beginnings of it will come out of Memphis, Egypt. Or you say, now you really, you really pulled my leg. You're trying to tell me that you really know uh, that a world government's going to arise after this next war. Well, I might be able to leave that. But to say that its leader's going to come out of a little old country like Egypt uh, with a population of only about 10 million people and poor as Job's turkey, no oil, and almost no oil, we got back part of the Sinai, eye, and hardly any money, and no gold, no nothing, but a whole lot of desert and a whole lot of river and a whole lot of very poor people and hardly any power, although it does have one of the largest uh, armies in the Middle East. I think uh, estimate something around 400,000 men, and very well armed, uh, first of all by Russia and then now by the United States. Nevertheless, it's considered one of the lesser powers of the world, one of the very minor powers of the world. How could the next great world government, and of all things, its world leader, the great Superman world dictator, the Antichrist, how could he come out of such a little tiny country like Egypt? How could such a government arise out of a little country like Egypt? Well, let me tell you, anything is possible with God, and in this case, something is going to be possible with the devil, because God is going to allow it, going to allow the devil to take over the whole world to see who's going to worship him when they see him come out in his true colors, and they know they're literally worshiping the devil himself, to see how many are going to take his mark of the beast. He's called the beast, the Santa Christ, devil-possessed man. As who see how many true Christians are going to refuse it. So God is God, and the devil is the devil, and God is going to allow the devil to possess this man and to create this government out of its very humble beginnings in Egypt itself. This man, we are convinced, is alive this very day. He is already a leader somewhere and studying somewhere, preparing somewhere for this tremendous job he is about to assume as soon as the war is over. Uh, we've had several theories as to who he is, and one of the things that God has said is that the next king of Egypt, after Sadat, whoever the next great leader of Egypt is going to be, may not be the present president at all, there may be two or three intervening minor leaders before he arises, we don't know, but things are moving very fast right now. And according to the prophecies God has given us, the next great leader of Egypt will be the Antichrist, this world dictator of the coming world government. Now, if God is just speaking of Egypt as a type of the world, the world system, the world government, as it once was, that Egypt is a type of this great government, 
that again Egypt is a type of it, well, you might theorize and you might uh, spiritualize the interpretation as not being literal, that it merely, merely means that uh, the world, uh, worldly, worldwide system is all Egypt. And spiritually speaking, in a sense, that's true. Uh, uh, in uh, spiritually speaking, in relation to the worldwide Egypt or the world of Egypt or the Egypt of the world, uh, all under the domination of Satan and his uh, various leaders. Uh, in a sense, we are the children of God. We are definitely the children of God in every sense. But we are like Israel was to Egypt at that time. And our kingdom within our hearts, the kingdom of God within us, is like the promised land was to the Jews. So you may want to spiritualize all this and say it's all spiritually to be interpreted and it's all uh, spiritually be fulfilled and it doesn't necessarily mean specific countries and all that. Well, listen to the rest of this prophecy if you don't think so. Out of it shall come the great confusion. Now, what is the great confusion? Well, is it the war? Or is it the coming of world antichrist government? For a while, it'll be very orderly. There'll be an awful lot of confusion after that war, let me tell you. Terrific confusion. Uh, before they began to get organized, uh, begin to get organized and pick up the pieces and put it back together again and establish the new world order. There'll be great confusion. And I am convinced from this prophecy, as you're going to see, that God, you may say, well, he's just calling the what follows the great confusion. But that the war, the atomic war, is going to literally precipitate the great confusion. Listen. Now, out of Memphis, Egypt's going to come the great confusion. The author of confusion is even now marshalling his forces for this great confusion. And, of course, the author of confusion is the devil himself. But we believe he is already directing this uh, anti-God, anti-Christ man. And <clears throat> that he is gaining power and influence already in the world and going to eventually... Uh, be hailed as the world savior and world leader. He is gathering his forces from an a great nation and eastern nations, friends that will join with him. Now this sounds pretty specific and literal regarding actual nations of the world, not a theoretically uh, world system called Egypt or a theoretically world uh, kingdom of God called uh, us and Christians or Christendom, but literal nations. I am convinced personally that this is talking about the literal nation of Egypt from which he and it shall arise and the literal uh, eastern nations which will join with it, a great nation and eastern nations. Now why did he differentiate in this prophecy between the great nation and eastern nations? says he's gathering his forces from a great nation, a one very great nation, and eastern nations that will join with him. Hmm. He's going to get his power not from Egypt, but from a great existing nation in the world, which is powerful enough to be called a great nation, which eastern nations will join, in fact are already joining, and what power in this world, what nation on the face of the earth could be so great as to be able to solicit the aid of all the nations and kings of the East, as God's word says in many other places? What other nation, which might not be called an Eastern nation, but in fact was originally considered a European nation, a Western nation, with a Western culture and civilization, even a Christian nation at one time? What great nation could that be other than Russia? Which has always considered itself European from its beginnings and Western rather than Eastern. So the prophecy says from a great nation, like Russia in other words, and other Eastern nations. This author of confusion, uh, personified even now by this man who is arising and going to influence and rule the world is already getting his help from Russia and Eastern nations. 
Now, what are the Eastern nations, anyhow? What would you call the Eastern nations? Well, here we have uh, Europe, here, and very little of it now is Western. Almost all of it from about here on over is already Eastern. Isn't it called East Europe? Huh? Eastern nations. How about that? Excuse me. And then, now, even Russia is east of that, right? So isn't that combination already called the East? But nevertheless, led by one great nation, helped by many Eastern nations. Eastern Europe, the Eastern Arabs of the Middle East, isn't that called the Middle East? This is called the Middle East, so if this is in the middle of the East, there must be a lot more East here. In fact, nearly all of North Africa is occupied by Arabs who consider themselves Eastern nations and not Western and are more and more aligning themselves with the East against the West. And then also uh, the Middle Eastern nations Afghanistan already in the firm grip of Russia. Iran, such a weak country, along uh, with Turkey, so uh, uh, weak they could not possibly uh, resist uh, an invasion from as powerful nation as Russia, and they're right on the borders. Iraq and Syria. Uh, Iraq and Syria, you may not be able to see all this very well, but Iraq and Syria, already uh, pro-communist, pro-Russian, armed and financed by Russia. <clears throat> Turkey is swaying in the balance between Russia and the U.S., and the U.S. has treated it very badly, almost bankrupted, uh, I'm sure because of Jewish influence against the Turks, because of the way they have treated the Jews, as well as Christians. Uh, Iran, a very weak uh, Islamic government today, which uh, only needs one little tiny push to topple it, and is almost toppled already with half its leadership already assassinated and blown up, destroyed, and uh, only run by a few mullahs, uh, religious fanatics, uh, and already displeasing the vast majority of the people uh, who are sick and fed up with it, and uh, a government there in Iran, which is a minority government now, does not represent the majority of the people by any means, and it seems almost worse than the government of the Shah, which preceded it. The Shah was at least trying to modernize and westernize and almost Christianize his country. Uh, but this has been a revolt that has thrust Iran back hundreds of years into the past. So it's a very weak country, a pushover for the forces of uh, Russia. And all these Eastern nations will, God's Word tells us, in the Bible and here, and in many prophecies that all these Eastern nations will finally join forces with this great nation of Russia and will uh, invade and conquer the West as a result. Uh, <clears throat> where will it begin? Well, let me read a little more of the prophecy. So sudden, well, now when? Now, first of all, it really tells you where it begins. It's already begun. The war is already on, really only it has not broken out in a complete, open, violent, uh, conventional warfare, uh, nor nuclear warfare, but it will very soon. And the war goes on, as I wrote ten years ago, from England. And the war has been going on since the devil entered the Garden of Eden. It is a spiritual warfare made manifest physically uh, amongst the nations and peoples of the earth. <clears throat> and it's already been going on between the East and the West for many years, ever since the rise of Russian communism back in 1917, after World War I. So uh, the East and the West have been in existence now uh, for uh, nearly 70 years or 65 years. Russia has been celebrating its, uh, what was it, 65th anniversary recently, communism. And so therefore, uh, this prophecy tells you, as well as the Bible, where it's all going to begin. Uh, I hope you're not disappointed. It's not actually going to begin or hinge on Europe. Although many military men are saying it's going to begin in Europe. 
and that Europe will be the major battlefield. Well, that's what they say. That's not what the Bible says. God's word points out very clearly that it's going to begin here in the Middle East, over in here. And specifically, it's already begun with the rise of this man and of Egypt and so on uh, to become a world power. And he is going to lead a great nation without Russia and all these Eastern nations, including the Arab nations and so on, in this great war. So that's who and that's where so far. Now the next question is, of course, when? Well, the Lord did not specify exactly when, but through our own interpretation, personal, private interpretation, if you want to call it, of various prophecies we have received ourselves, various time prophecies, such as the watch prophecy and the 70 years prophecy and so on, and also certain prophecies of Daniel, and we haven't time to go into those details now, we have in the former Eden series. But from what we can estimate, uh, the world dictator, the Antichrist, assumes power, apparently, sometime around uh, 1987, wasn't that uh, somewhere around there, uh, 1986 or 7, give or take a few months. Uh, because he has to rule the world for seven years, and by the process of elimination, working backwards from the final date that God uh, uh, gave us, or at least we interpret it as being that date, of uh, the coming of Christ, somewhere around 1993, or perhaps 1994, <clears throat> working back to seven years of the Antichrist reign, will put him in power, beginning his reign, ruling the world, a world government, uh, around 1986 or 87. Now, if so, he's going to have to have time to get that government together. It's not going to happen overnight, right after the war. It takes a little time to get uh, pick up the pieces and put them back together again and get organized and reorganized, and especially to organize an entire worldwide government of all nations. And that is going to take a little while. There may be even a few nations after the war who will still stubbornly resist and by fighting and committing national suicide uh, rather than to surrender. I wouldn't be surprised that some of the strongly Catholic Christian nations of South America will fight almost to the death rather than surrender to this one they recognize even from their Catholic Bible as being the Antichrist. I believe that Christian nations like South Africa, oh, you didn't know South Africa was a Christian nation? Well, you should try to visit there uh, as we have and see how Christian their television is. They've got more religion and more real Christian religion and more gospel preaching on television of any nation we have ever been in, in either North America or Central America or the Caribbean or Europe or North Africa. In fact, I've become almost convinced that South Africa is about the most Christian country in the whole world. Well, <coughs> as we have said in the letter on South Africa, it may be uh, that it will suit uh, the world power's uh, purposes to uh, rather than have to fight South Africa to the death, and South Africa has got the power to fight for quite a while, particularly to hold off all of Africa, because Africa and the black Africa particularly does not have the weapons nor the power, even though it may have the numbers. It has not got the brains nor the weapons nor the power nor the organization that South Africa has. Uh, to fight, uh, as well as South Africa can, and South Africa has already proven this in uh, fighting a number of South African nations, which it is holding at bay, five or six uh, enemy nations surrounding it, and uh, having already conquered half of Angola in a recent uh, invasion to keep the enemy at bay as far away as possible, uh, knowing that it is through uh, Angola and so on that the uh, her final threat is really going to come because only in Angola is there sufficient power to fight her, uh, with the Cuban uh, 15, 20,000, or maybe more by that time, uh, Cuban troops there, organized by Cubans and East Germans and uh, uh, communist brains. So 
So uh, even as we told you in a letter uh, before, the battle for Africa, about Conakry being one of the communist centers, and, and then on down how it's being organized, that uh, first Rhodesia would have to fall, if uh, possible, and uh, it fell without a fight, uh, voluntarily surrendered. Uh, sad to say, but uh, it uh, Angola is thoroughly communist and communist financed and supported and dominated and armed and ruled and couldn't even exist if it weren't for the communist forces and the Cubans and all there. So the greatest military threat to South Africa comes from that direction, which is why she's holding on to Southwest Africa or so-called Namibia. And I wouldn't be surprised that South Africa is so Christian and they're so stubborn, those square-headed uh, Dutchmen and those uh, round-headed Germans, or is it the other way around? I've forgotten. They are so bullish and bearish and stubborn and uh, hard-headed that they would probably fight to the death rather than surrender. And they've got a pretty good chance of standing off all of Africa until uh, they may make some kind of a deal uh, with the devil or the devil man to at least continue a little while longer. Uh, this we know, we know that Africa, or rather South Africa, is going to exist and continue and be safe. A safe haven, believe it or not, until after this coming war. God told us specifically this in a dream which we have not yet revealed to you until this very moment. Only a few have heard of the specifics of that dream and we are now going to release the full text, God willing, to tell you. Now that we have been there and we've found out for ourselves what it's like and we know the situation and now we can reveal to you what God said. Because I heard it with my own ears in a dream. It was specific. At the time I was in the Orange Free State. The words were said specifically that it was the Orange Free State. As some staggered out of the jungle or uh, the wilds, the wilderness, perhaps as a result of the war, or maybe with the war impending, we don't know when that's going to happen, but an officer approached us and said, this is the Orange Free State. You will be safe here until after the war. So South Africa is going to continue right on through the war until after the war, how long we don't know, before the uh, great world communist power takes it over completely. But... Even after the war, with all the horrible destruction that's even going to occur also in Russia, Russia will not be completely prepared to take over the entire earth and rule every single government, every single nation. Not yet. She's made as much progress, as much headway as she can thus far, and has taken over as many nations as she can in order to have a good position for taking over the rest of the world when the end comes, or the end of uh, Western capitalism and the United States and her enemies. But it will take some time to uh, gradually uh, reorganize and organize her world government and to take over each individual little country throughout the world. Meantime, uh, the new world power will have to let these little countries more or less run themselves the best they can in the resulting great confusion, as God's word calls it. Great confusion. And if you don't think it's uh, going to be a result of that uh, great atomic uh, outburst uh, within uh, one hour, even only one day of warfare, all be over. Uh, listen to what this says. When is it going to happen? Well, so sudden will be the great confusion that it will cause a mighty widening of the eyes. It's going to happen when? Suddenly. Very suddenly. So suddenly that it uh, will Sorry, poor Mama Maria is suffering from a cold. I didn't even notice the door was open. Shut it, honey. We need to shut it out. So, so, you have to be conscious of the comfort of your audience as well, beloved. Don't forget that. Shut it completely if you can. When is it going to happen? Well, it's going to happen very suddenly. Very, very suddenly. Suddenly, just like that door was shut only with a greater, much bigger bang than that. 